Hello, this is Irv Shapiro, a.k.a. Dr. Vax, and today we're going to look at the tools you'll need and what they'll cost to get started with 3D printing. Okay, let's begin with an overall budget. All of the tools on this table can be purchased for maybe under $100 if you're a great shopper, but easily for under $150. No single tool on this table should cost you more than $15. The only possible exception might be a caliper, but you can get lots of these for right around $15. Maybe you want to spend a little more and spend $20 or $25. Everything else will be under $15. So let's look pretty much in order of how often I use them and what tools I use besides my 3D printers. So the first tool you need is a diagonal cutter or a snip. Um, initially, you should purchase one of the least expensive ones you can buy. You may get this with your 3D printer if you buy it as a kit. As you use it more, you may find yourself upgrading, but you really don't need to spend a couple bucks. Do not go to your local big box hardware retailer and buy a diagonal snip. You will pay too much. Why do you need this? Well, every time you load filament into a 3D printer, you need to cut the end off at a angle, at a 45 degree angle, prior to loading it into the extruder. So you need a diagonal snip. Likewise, you'll want to have a needle nose pliers for pulling filament out from the printer if it gets stuck. Um, just a useful thing to have. Next, you'll need an X-Acto knife or some type of small knife. You can buy these inexpensively at hobby stores or for less money online. The next thing you'll need is a number of metrics. Every 3D printer I've looked at is calibrated in metrics. That might be, not be true for everyone, but everyone I've looked at is uh, in metric measurements. You'll need a set of metrics Allen wrenches. Now, it's very tempting to buy one of these things. I always found these things to be relatively worthless. You never can get in where you need to get in, and what I much prefer is to go online and buy an inexpensive set of screwdriver style Allen wrenches. I think these are much, much easier to use. Sometimes you see T style Allen wrenches. Those tend to be more expensive. These can, you can get a set of three or four or five once again for well under $15. Next, pretty much every hardware store you walk into as you're walking out has a bunch of these screwdrivers with interchangeable bits. I think it's great to have one of these. Uh, you don't need to, once again, don't spend much money. Finally, it's good, optionally, you should say have a set, a metric socket set for smaller size nuts. Um, these you can buy inexpensively also online, along with potentially a set of small screwdrivers. Um, in traditional flat blades and Phillips blades um, as the basic tools you'll need. Now, with the current 3D printers with removable print beds, it's much easier to get your print off the print bed. If I take an example of the Prusa printer, you just flex the bed and the print comes off. However, if it does get stuck, you will want a, a sharp, paint scraper. Um, very often these once again come with your printer. This came with the Creality Ender 5 printer I got, um, but you may need to buy one of these. Now the last tool I'm going to recommend is really to help you get started in more advanced printing. So I mentioned that one of the tools I use all day long is my X-Acto knife. I use it for cutting tape, I use it for trimming um, models where there's a little bit of extra plastic somewhere. And in order to use that X-Acto knife, keep it handy, I wanted to have a holder for that X-Acto knife. So what did I do? I designed it and printed it. And I'll be doing a video on exactly how to do that. In order to do that, I used a digital caliper to measure the width of the vertical on one of my shelves that this is going to slide over. 
I use this to measure the diameter of the actual X-Acto knife. So a digital caliper, and I prefer doing it in metric, is a wonderful, wonderful tool to have. This is $15 to $25, but um, I believe this is a $15 one. Finally, a nice to have is a heat gun. This is sort of a micro heat gun. This is Radio Shack. I don't think you can buy Radio Shack anymore, but I did um, just check online. I know Newegg and Amazon both have heat guns for around $15. Um, these get to about 170 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little warmer. That would be 60 to 70 degrees centigrade. And they are perfect when you have a model that has stringing, if you blow a heat gun at the stringing, it melts the fine strings and they seem to disappear. So it's nice to have. Now there are a couple consumables you should have. You should have isopropyl al alcohol. I find this is the best thing in general to clean your print bed with. I use it before every single print when I'm printing PLA. You should have Windex. If you're printing PET or other nylon, other filaments that tend to stick very strong to the heat bed, you need a bit of lubrication. And if you use just old, plain old window cleaner, I use Windex, it's what I happen to pick up, it leaves just enough of a film on the print bed that it doesn't stick. And then for really sticky things, when I print flex, I do cover my print bed with blue painter's tape. Um, I bought this at a big box retailer, I don't know that any brand is any better than any other. And finally, the lubricant that I like to use on my printer is silicon. So this comes out as a liquid and then dries to effectively a very fine powder. I use this for lubricating all the components of my printer. It is, does not interact with plastic at all. It's very easy to work with and it's very inexpensive. So I hope that was helpful. Everything on this table can be purchased for about $150 or less, except for the filament. And if you enjoyed learning about the tools I use, the hand tools I use, in conjunction with my 3D printers, please like this video. Please subscribe to the Dr. Vax channel. Thank you. Leave me notes about other Maker Basic videos you'd like to see me produce. Have a great day.